Hi, my name is Carolyn Marks. I'm a research scientist at Atlas Antibodies, and today I'm going to talk to you about glioma biology and molecular markers. Gliomas represent over 30% of all CNS tumors and over 80% of malignant brain tumors. Gliomas arise from glial cells, astrocytes, ependymal cells, and oligodendrocytes. Each of these glial cells can give rise to a distinctive type of cancer called astrocytomas, oligodendrogliomas, and glioblastomas. The symptoms of glioma can vary dramatically by tumor type, size, location, and growth rate. Gliomas are diagnosed by imaging, biopsy, and the combination of genetic and molecular tests. Interestingly, the incidence of malignant gliomas is higher in white males. Prognosis is overall extremely poor in glioma. The most aggressive being glioblastomas, which only have a 5% survival rate in five years. The current treatment options are radiotherapy, chemotherapy, surgery, and personalized targeted treatment strategies. Now, in order to understand glioma biology or our understanding of glioma biology, I wanna take you back. I wanna take you back to the history of glioma classification. And this started with the pathological-based classification. Now, this system is attributed entirely to Harvey Cushing and Percival Bailey. They detailed thousands of gliomas by size, by grade, location, and almost a century laid the foundation for the histological classification of gliomas, with, of course, the help of the first three editions of the World Health Organization classification of CNS tumors. Up until 2007, all glioma tumors were classified by histology alone, and they were graded by severity, grade one through four. The three classes were based on cell morphology and include astrocytoma, oligodendrocytoma, and there was a third class here, which originated as a mixture of astrocytes and oligodendrocytes and was called oligoastrocytoma. Now, at this time, all tumors classified as grade three and four underwent surgery followed by radiation and chemotherapy. And at that time, the only available chemotherapy was temozolomide, which is an alkylating chemotherapy. And the results of this clinical regime was truly profound for both the patients and for glioma biology, because the patients responded in three ways. Some showed increased survival, some decreased survival, and some were entirely resistant. And this in particular was this oligoastrocytoma class. This was the major catalyst that drove us into the molecular-based classification system and was defined by the 2016 WHO classification, which required the combination of pathology um, and histology and exhibited molecular ab abnormalities. The molecular-based classification of gliomas began only 20 years ago, in 2001, with microarrays, but was truly ignited by the emergence of the Cancer Genome Atlas in 2008 and 2013 an initiative to understand the genetics of tumors. And glioblastomas were the first tumors investigated. Researchers from several countries all over the world carried out comprehensive molecular characterization on 578 primary glioblastomas. They identified several somatic gene mutations, alterations in signaling pathways, and establish subclassifications based on histology, genetics, and molecular markers. 
this truly revolutionized glioma classification. What emerged is the somatic landscape of glioma tumors, which combines histology and molecular markers for an integrated diagnosis. Now, when characterizing the molecular subgroups of glioblastoma, very distinct genetic and epigenetic profiles emerged by each classification, which were truly important. These were classified further by age group, uh, by location of the tumor, and by MGMT promoter methylation status. What they observed is patients with a high percent of MGMT promoter methylated levels were the only groups that responded well to timozolomide, which was observed, as you can see, in only two of these subgroups of glioblastoma. All other subclasses were either resistant or displayed extremely different responses. And altogether, this could then predict survival, which you can see ranges from less than 12 months and the longest survival rates for these subgroups of glioblastoma being three years. This resulted in a reclassification of all glioma tumors, a reclassification with a five layer approach. First, tumors were subdivided as either midline tumors or hemispheric tumors. For midline tumors, immunistic chemistry was performed for the histone 3 K27 mutant and was evaluated by IHC alone. But for hemispheric, IHC was performed to identify IDH1 positive or IDH1 negative status. And this was then followed by ATRX, and specifically either the loss of nuclear ATRX exhibited here and here, or the retention of nuclear ATRX. Now this is interesting and, and important. The loss is only observed in the tumor cells. So you'd have this internal control, positive control, of non-tumor cells. So ATRX was very important as a protein signature. Next, IDH12 sequencing was performed as IHC alone could only identify the IDH1 mutant status and you needed both. Then quite profoundly, I would say, uh, the 1P19Q codeletion was identified as a molecular marker for differential diagnosis, specifically of oligodendrogliomas. Now, as you can see on the left, in normal chromosomes, two green and two red signals are exhibited, but in oligodendrogliomas, they identified either a single deletion being two green and one red, or the co-deletion of 1P19Q, which is exhibited by one green and one red. This molecular marker could distinguish oligodendrogliomas from all others, and thereby eliminated this misclassification of oligoastrocytomas altogether. This classification has continued to evolve up to today with the latest two classification of CNS tumors in 2021 and is now a seven layer integrated diagnosis comprised of eight genomic and five protein signatures, each of which are stratified by location and predictive of patient response to treatment. I would like to highlight IDH and ATRX, as they still remain the two gatekeepers of this classification that we use today. Atlas Antibodies offers antibodies targeting several proteins relevant for glioma characterization. 
most notably ATRX and IDH1. ATRX is most often used to distinguish between low-grade gliomas and high-grade gliomas. IDH1 in green, ATRX in red, and DAPI nuclear counterstain in blue is shown in combination here via multiplexing IF in glioblastoma and in oligodendroglioma tumors, which in my opinion, if these were available 20 years ago, could have helped avoid the astrocytoma misclassification. This 2017 study examined ATRX, IDH1, P53, and PARP1 in a glioblastoma cohort. They found that PARP1 expression is highly correlated with survival, but only in specific glioblastoma subtypes. This indicated that DNA damage and repair pathways are important for these subtypes and suggested the development of targeted treatments exploiting these mechanisms. Such therapies using PARP1 inhibitors and DNA checkpoint inhibitors are used in clinical trials today. The current approaches are now focused on the glioma tumor microenvironment. It has become clear that there are six mechanisms that regulate glioblastoma tumor microenvironment, and they are displayed here many of which are interdependent and carry specific molecular signatures. Now, of these six mechanisms, four principles have emerged that are paramount to our understanding of various gliomas and are crucial for the development of new treatment strategies. And they are one, angiogenesis, two, immunomodulation, and three, cancer stem cells, and in conjunction, drug resistance. Current challenges in glioma diagnosis, therapy, and prognosis include limited treatment, high disease recurrent rate, inter and intra tumoral heterogeneity, the blood brain barrier, primary tumor versus metastases, progression versus pseudoprogression and of course, the lack of reliable biomarkers. And with that, I would like to leave you with a final offering, the glioma proteum. The glioma proteum was developed by the Human Protein Atlas, which is the origin of Atlas antibodies. The Human Protein Atlas is a 12-year initiative that has mapped all proteins in the human body using antibody-based imaging, mass spectrometry-based proteomics, transcriptomics, and systems biology. All data is open access and contained in these six atlases. And these polyclonals are produced by atlas antibodies. Thus, you can choose between over 21,000 primary antibodies for your research of polyclonals and over 500 monoclonals. The glioma proteome or the glioblastoma transcriptome combines transcriptomic patient data from the Cancer Genome Atlas with antibody-based protein data. The Cancer Genome Atlas glioblastoma project contained proteomic data for only 214 proteins. And here, the glioblastoma transcriptome has identified 72% of all human genes are expressed in glioma, and of those, 682 genes have showed elevated expression. 268 genes are suggested as prognostic, which is more than the total number of proteins employed by the Cancer Genome Atlas. And of those, 201 are associated with unfavorable prognosis, such as REAP2 here shown on the right. And 67 genes are associated with favorable prognosis. I urge you to have a look at the glioma proteome and use these molecular markers and perhaps uncover the secrets that precipitate the next revolution of molecular classification in glioma with the hope to contribute to better treatment strategies for these patients. And with that, I would like to conclude by thanking AACR and all of you for your attention. 
and ask you to stay tuned for the release of new glioma markers coming December 3rd, 2021.